No organization is responsible for the content of this video. All errors and omissions are the sole responsibility of myself, David Iverson. This video must not be your only source of information. Please attend official USSA educational opportunities. Please download official USSA educational materials. Okay, so in this video we're going to look at uh, report of the referee or the process verbal to judge arbitraire or the protocol de Schried Richters, depending on what language you're going to speak. Okay, and one of my themes about being a race secretary is to do things as they're happening. Fill out the paperwork as it's happening. Okay, so I want to sort of walk you through how I deal with this form. Okay, so um, before the day of race, fill out the header. So, one. Oh, header. So this is ref report. Before the race happens, I'm going to fill out the header. So the place where all the place is going to be Burke Mountain VT country is going to be USA. Uh, I haven't in any of my videos yet talked about Kodaks, but I'll, I'll get to one of those eventually and you'll probably watch it before you watch this video. So, if we're doing a fist race, we'll assume that we're doing a fist race. So my fist race Kodaks is going to be like 1699. Whatever it is, that's what you fill in there. I'll do another video on codexes eventually. Name of the event, let's call that um, Eastern Cup uh, GS. The date, well, since we're doing a fist race, we got to do the, the day first, so we'll call it the 24th of March. 2011. Why not? Category fist gender uh, male and the event is going to be GS. Okay. So the other thing that they don't have on here is first run, second run. So right up at the top I'm going to put first run. So if I'm running an event, I'm going to want to have as many of these as I'm going to use during the day. I'm going to have them filled out like this. First run, second run, men, women, whatever I need. And I'm going to have them in my little race file ready to pull out. And then, of course, I'm expecting that I'm going to be making mistakes. So I'm going to have a few blank forms like this, just in case I make a mistake. So, um, okay. Now, down here, did not start. So the next thing is um, before first run,
Okay, so before the first run goes, I'm going to want to get a list of unregistered racers from registration. What that means is people who were supposed to be there but didn't show up to register. Now, there's going to be a few different things. Uh, some might show up late. Uh, and how you deal with that, you're going to have to deal with that on your own. But, basically, almost all of those are going to be DNS. So, before the first run, get a list of unregistered racers from registration, and almost all of them are going to be DNS, which means that they're going to did not start. And so kind of, right off the bat, remember, okay, This is a really important principle. You can always correct or redo later. So I want to do all my paperwork as things are happening and if I make a mistake then I'll redo the things that I made a mistake on. But if I didn't make a mistake then it's already done at the end of the race. So my registration person tells me that bib 8 bib 14 and bib um, 71 did not show up to registration. So bib 8, 14, and 71 did not show up to registration so I'm going to list them on my sheet as did not start and I'm going to do that before the race even happens. Then when I'm running the race my starter goes, uh, we don't have a bib 8. I'll go, oh, remember please that I told you that bib 8's a no-show. And they're going to go, oh, okay, yeah, I've got bib 9. Okay, bib 9 in the gate. And they're going to go, hey, I don't see bib 14. And you go, oh, bib 14 is also a did not start. Oh, yeah, okay, great, I got bib 15 right now. We're ready to go. Okay. So that's, so I have these listed out before the race goes so that I've got a nice little um, record of where it go of of who I'm expecting to not start and suppose that oh let's put in bib 113 suppose 113 didn't show up to registration but their car got stuck or something like that and they do show up and they inspect from the lift and the jury's okay with them running without inspecting or whatever so 113 is actually going to go and here I've written down poor 113 under did not start well here's what I do and now 113 is not on my did not start form anymore okay now, while the race is happening, people are going to not finish. So as, so as people are going down, let's say bib 2 did not, doesn't finish. And then bib, uh, and then bib 17 does not finish. And then bib 38 does not finish etc etc what I'm doing is as people are DNFing I am recording them on the ref report as DNF so So as people DNF, I record them on the sheet as DNF. And DNF stands for did not finish. Now, 
somebody calls on the radio and says, and says, oh, so-and-so DQ'd. So now what I do is I fill in, oh, stop, wait. Stop. Do not record disqualifications without referee approval You know, you can keep a list on scratch paper of people that you think disqualified, but you do not put disqualifications on this sheet until the end of the race. Okay. So, the last person goes and the gatekeepers come in or the gatekeepers hand their cards to the head gatekeeper. The head gatekeeper comes in with the cards. The referee is sitting there and I have a gatekeeper card here and it says that 26, 32, 85, 93 uh, disqualified. I'm not going to fill out all of those. Um, and then so the referee comes in he looks at this, he flips it over, and he goes, oh yeah, 26, yep, that's what I saw 26 do. And good referees will see the disqualifications, most likely. Um, but maybe he didn't, maybe he was someplace else, or she. And he goes, okay, well, yeah, I got a name, everything works out, date, GS, men, uh, well, wrong run, but that's okay. False gates 4 through 8. 26 came down and missed gate 7. Okay, fine. I'm fine with that. Bib 26 disqualified. So then you go, Bib 26 was missed gate 7. The gate judge was David Iverson. And miss the gate, and then you got to do a little bit of research. You got to go into the timing file, and you got to find out that who was Bib 26. So Bib 26 was, uh, let's see, uh, was. Caitlin Einhorn, and let's say that they um, race for USA, but you might also want to put in there that they, you know, were an SMS kid, so that, uh, well, probably don't need that. Coaches are going to know who their kids are, so you probably don't need that information on there, but you might want to contact their coach directly and say, "Hey, we got disqualification on your on your kid." It's up to them to go back to the uh, the board and determine that none of their kids DQ'd. But professional courtesy, you might want to do that. Okay, so filled all this out before the race happened. Filled this out before the beginning of the first run. Filled out the did not finishes as they were happening. When the cards came in, I filled out the uh, I filled out the disqualifications, and then the last thing. Then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check all of this information against what I have in my timing file. So. I'm going to make absolutely sure that in my timing file I have 81471 listed as DNF. I'm sorry, DNS did not start. 
2, 17, and 38 listed as did not finish. And I'm going to make absolutely sure that I've got bib 26, Caitlin Einhorn, disqualified at gate 7. Okay, once I make sure that I've got that, the last thing is we're going to do, they don't give you enough room here, but the time published will say was like 11.15. The deadline is 15 minutes, so it's going to be 11.30. The date is going to be from up here, uh, 24 3 2011. Whoop. And then the referee comes in and the referee looks over everything. They look over this. They're happy. You're happy. Everybody's happy. And they make a little scrawl down there. And then they take this copy and they post it. And then you keep this copy for your records. And then one other thing that I want to just make a note of for you while I have you here is you're running the race and somebody asks you, <clears throat> you're timing the race and somebody whispers in your ear, hey, what kind of sandwich do you want for lunch? And so you're right, and so you're busy talking and you don't want to So somebody says, what do you want for lunch? And you say, and you just write ham and cheese so that you don't have to say ham and cheese. You just write it. And they go, and they put their thumb up and they bring you back a ham and cheese sandwich. And because you did that on top of your form, then when they go to post the disqualifications, it says ham and cheese on your disqualification sheet. So... Please keep in mind that these are carbonless forms and don't write on top of them. Only write what you want and make sure you set them off to the side so that they don't get written on top of.